Any questions here? We'll ask if like if you need correction, we'll see. Alright, so let's move on to our next movement. Uh, a question. When you're when you're teaching uh, coming down, how do you teach them to lengthen the spine? You want to make sure that they think about almost like they're a dummy, like they're gonna hold their head up. As your as your feet, uh, sorry, as your heels come down, you want to make through a separation through the spine to make them feel longer, like lengthening through. That's where we say lengthening through. So if you're here, think about straightening through, lifting through your spine, and adding a little space in between each vertebrae. Okay, into our next movement, we're gonna go into coupe, which means to cut. So we're gonna start in parallel. So a coupe for here is you want to lift your toe onto the side of your foot, and you're going to use or your leg. You're going to use your leg for stability here, and it's going to make a little diamond. But your knee is going to go forward in parallel, and again from here you would just come down gently with your toe while heel coming down. And you can do that to the other side as well. Again, coming up to the side of your leg and then coming down. I use the side of the leg for stability, so you don't want them to come forward as your toe. You want to keep it in line with your leg. For a coupe, for a well-defined whenever you're teaching it, always keep it by the leg, and then you would come back down. And the same thing on the other side, keep it attached to the leg, and come back down. Instead of having them come forward, it creates a different look. Okay? And then in turnout, again, it's gonna make like a half diamond. This one, coupe, keeping it on the leg. Again, so it's a more defined look. You can easily clean it, instead of keeping it somewhere else. You keep it on the side of your leg with balance. You don't sit your weight here. You want to keep standing up straight. And then you would come down. Again, coming right back into that first turned out. And again on the other side, same concept. Just on the other side, you keep your foot against your leg in a point, using that to help stable and keeping this straight up out of your standing hip. And come back down. Any questions on a coupe? Let me add something to that. <clears throat> One of the things that you're going to see kids do more often than not is when they go into the coupe, they let the hip drop. And you see how my hip just dropped down? And that's when you start to see the line shift on the body. So you want to think, as they're move, moving this, nothing here moves. This has to stay lifted the whole time. And if you don't, if you don't watch for that, you're going to end up seeing that when they, and they're in ranks and they do that, it's going to look like that, where it's all centered as opposed to up. So, you know, she, she mentioned about standing tall, <clears throat> but always remember, it's when they move this foot, the tendency is to want to pull this hip out. So just keep that hip straight and lift up. Really clean that. Okay, now we're gonna look at our next one, and it's similar to coupe, but it's called a passe, and it needs to pass through. So it's just like if you want to think a coupe, but going higher onto your leg. And for a passe, you want to think about drawing a line straight up your leg to help when you're defining this. So in parallel, you go into a coupe. From here, you keep your leg attached, drawing that leg up. I usually go about to mid-calf because that's a good stable point to be able to hold this. You don't want to go any higher about mid-calf. And again, drawing that leg, going right back down to the ground. To coupe and then to place it down instead of just like placing straight down but again that's your preference when you're doing your visual so from here again on the left side go into coupe lift up keeping that standing leg still again don't stick your hip out keeping it up and being able to hold this is another idea of the balance keeping everything still and coming down to coupe and into close from here into into turnout you're going to see that little diamond as you can see in the last picture Go into coupe, rise up into your mid calf. Again, don't let your heel sink because this is going to be comfortable then to stable. Keeping it up, keeping it on your leg, but do not put all your weight down onto the leg. You want to stay lifted. This is just to help hold this down. And again, get down into coupe and into close. Going on to the other side, you want to make sure you're standing up straight. Coupe, rise it up into a passe standing leg straight up, making sure that your foot is on your leg. You can come down. What you might see is that they'll try to push their heel forward. You see how it's wrapping around my leg? That's not the image we want to create. It's called a sickle, is how I define it. You want to make sure that everything is going straight up your line from the toe to the heel, up to the leg. If it wraps, 
then they're going to start to sink into this hip. I want to make sure it's staying up and lifted. Do we have any questions on the posse? All right. Let's go into our next movement. And it's a lunge, and it's a weight shift. Now we can go to the front, the corner, the side, and the back. And we'll do this in first turned out, just so it's a more stable platform whenever you do this. So I'm going to do it on my right first. So you want to think about a tongue view, stepping a little forward, and going into your lunge. When you go, it's going to be knee over the toe. Do not let it go past it, because then they're going to start to fall over. You want to be in line, think body centered, and the weight is pushed over that front leg. The back leg is straight, and both feet are on the ground. We want to make sure that they don't start coming up off the ground with one. It's a stable platform. They'll be able to hold this if you want them like in a pose in like a group. This they can be able to hold this versus doing something a little different. So to come out of here, you want to think about pushing your weight to the back foot. This one comes into a tendu and into close. It's the cleanest way to come back up because they're coming through a tendu into close. So going to a corner, so we're facing this way. Again, the corner is to the natural 45. Go out into a tendu, into a lunge. Knees shouldn't go past your toes. The body is centered upright. The weight is over the front leg. And again, when you close, push the weight onto that back foot, into the standing leg, tendu, and into close. It's a more stable way to come up instead of just coming to close right away and your leg lifts off the ground to look on a wall. But you want to make sure you keep something connected to the ground so it's more stable coming in. To the side, straight to the side, again you lunge. Your toes should be going out to the 45, body center, knee over your toe. Oh, your weight is over your toe and your knee shouldn't go past it. Again, pushing up into a tongue and into close. They have, you can feel you have a more stable platform. Now going back is a little different. So your back leg is the one that's bent, your front leg is the one that's straight. Again, not letting anything rock back and forth. Do not overextend backward, keeping this evenly weighted. You push up into the back tendu and into close. How it leads from one into the other. Now going into the left side, using everything the same on the right. You go into a tendu and into a lunge. You need turned out. From here, your weight is over your front, keeping your back leg straight. You push up onto the front foot into a tongue and into close. And keeping your foot, you want to make sure that they do not flex their foot and come in. It's the toe that you want to be dragging on the ground to help. Now going to the corner, you step out and lunge. The weight is centered, oh, the weight is over your body center, pushing onto that standing leg and then onto your tongue, into the clubs. The corner, I have to make sure I don't crash into chairs. You step out to the side, into your lunge, your body centered your weight over, keeping this one straight on the ground, however, however long you want them to hold, pushing up into the tongue, and into close. Now the final one is going back on the left side, go into your tongue, and then lunge, making sure Really making sure that your knee is going over your toe on the back one, keeping the front leg straight, then pushing straight forward, and then into a close to be able to close correctly without wobbling so much here. Do we have any questions in the lunge? One of, one of the things that's the most important to remember when you're doing this uh, lunges, a lot of times you'll see bands when they go to close, that the, the, the whole line does this wobbly thing, and it's because they're trying to bring everything in together as opposed to, like she said, push the weight up into Tondu and close it. And that cleans it up right away. So, something to remember. Okay, so our next movement is a grapevine. In a grapevine, there is one position, and it's this middle position that you see, and it's called a fifth, and we'll go into it a little bit more. So it's a weaving motion from side to side. When we do this one, we'll do this one solely from one side into the other. I'll try to... Here, so we're going to start in first turn out. We're going to go to the right first. From here, you're going to step out to second with your right foot. And just a good shoulder hip angle. From here, your left foot is going to come behind your right leg. You want to think your left toe into your right heel. You want to make sure that your hips are staying forward, that this doesn't happen where they come this way. Everything stays forward in the upper body. 
So this is your fifth position. And what might happen is you might try to see them over step where everything now just turns naturally. You want to make sure it lands right behind your other foot. You step back out into second with the right foot. And then you would just coupe. For now, I just put coupe to here so that we can go back the other way. But you could use like close here or however you want to lead into the next part of your visual. But I'm just going to coupe so that we can go back into the other side. So we would step back out into second with the left foot. Now your right toe comes to your left heel, making sure it's right in line, hips and upper body are forward. Stepping out into second, and now this time I'll close for this demonstration. So we'll do this slowly, and so each step will be a count, so you're gonna go, I'll count five, six, seven, eight, you go one, two, three, coupe, five, six, seven, close. Okay, let's try that. So we're gonna go five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, coupe, five, six, seven, and close. Yes? Now, you really wanna make sure on the fifth that your hips don't turn, especially if you have a design on the front. It could cut off if you're going this way and my, and my, uh, my upper body turns to the 45. And this one, again, you can end in a coupe and push yourself back, or you can close once, but it, it's a moving one. So you wanna remember that it takes you off your dot for when you, if you end in a grapevine. Any questions in a grapevine? Okay, I think most important ones for the grapevine is remember that your hips stay forward. Um, I think like headlights on your hips, they always stay forward, they shouldn't turn off to the 45. I think another good thing to do when you're teaching them how to do the grapevine is to teach them the feet position. So if you look at the first picture, she's in the first position. If you look at the second picture, you have, and you just have the band do the same thing, so that when they start doing the actual step, they're very comfortable with it. So they know they go from first to second to fifth. And you're gonna see when they go into fifth position, like she was saying, the hips wanna turn because they're overstepping. That's when you really wanna look at fifth position, make sure shoulders and hips are all going forward. Then back to second into coupe. And all those fundamentals you've already covered. So that really makes it easier when you start doing something like this to clean it up. Let's look at our next basic skill. We're going to look at a Juan de Jean, and it's a circular movement of the leg, and you can do it forward and backward on both sides. Now, it's, it, when we do the video, you'll see it first before you attempt it. It's a semicircle, so if we split the circle in half, it's the full round part. We're going to go through tendus, this is the easiest way to think about it. Um, when you were little, could just be me, but when I was little and at the beach, I would draw a circle around myself, like with my feet to kind of like trap me in the circle and make a moat so my siblings couldn't get near me kind of thing. I don't know if you did it, but it's my thing. Um, but it's that same idea. So we'll watch the video first and then we'll go into it. So we go into a forward tendu, circles to the side, to the back, and into close. Coming backwards, the same thing. It's just going in reverse order. So from here, we'll start in first turned out. You point into a front tendu. You circle it around and you make sure you want to stand up out of your hip. Everything is rotating from your hip. So you come around through the corner, through the side, and into the back. When you come to the back, your hip is going to naturally turn out to turn out your hip so it can go back there. It's a natural rotation when you come into close. From here, going back again, keeping your leg straight. You don't want them to bend. They're losing so much extra space if they come bending instead of a straight leg. So from going backward, you go back into a back tendu, reach as far as you can, circling out and around, really stretching through the leg and into a closed position. Now we can also do it on the left side. You point on to your front tendu, circling as much as you can, standing straight up out of the hip, rotating naturally in the leg. Think your shoelaces out to the side and into a close. Keeping your leg straight also when you come in. You don't want it to just bend coming in. It should be a straight leg coming in. So coming backward, you go into a back tendu, circling around through the side, corner, front, keeping the leg straight as it comes in. You never want to let them bend and come in when you do everything. You want to make sure it's not locking your knee, because locking your knee can be bad, but it has a little bend, but it's very, like, it's very slight for the, when you're coming in. 
Do we have any questions in Ramanujan? Now, Now, this can also, it can also go slightly above the ground too, where you circle around the ground. It's just the next step up, but we're for now just keeping it down to a basic so we understand the skills needed to do all the fundamentals. Now our next movement is going to be a balance, which is a rocking step. Okay, and this one will show the video as well. Step out to second, fifth, that front leg points off. You step in a second again and into a close. Now this is a good for a feel of three whenever you're doing it. So this next slide will show the breakdown and we'll also go through it. So we're gonna start in first position. There's a little bit more steps for this one. So we're in first. We'll start with the right and close and then we'll go into the left as well. So you step onto your second. And again, you're gonna go into your fifth, your left toe to your right heel. Coming in, making sure your headlights are coming straight forward. From your front leg, it's going to point into a tendu off the ground. It's called a degage, so this is a degage towards the 45, again, keeping your hips, and then close back in to that fifth position. And then you would step out into second with the left foot, and into a close. So when you're thinking about it, you're just gonna push off the ground and right back into close. We'll try this slowly on the right side. Ready, so five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, down, four, five, six. Now when you do the, the little that you, do, you wanna make sure that your upper body doesn't come, it's just the lower body, because you could be playing here, you don't want everything to fall over. From here, it's just the lower body and right back down and step onto close to this on the right side. Now going to the left is the same thing. So you step on for a second. You step back with your right foot, heel to toe, point through, and then come right back down. Again, don't let it falter here. And you step out into your second, and then close into your first position. So let's try it on the left hand side slowly. So we're gonna go five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, point off and close. Step back and close. We wanna make sure that we go to the 45, so they can really see the leg in the visual. If you kick to the front, it's not gonna be as prominent as to the 45 and right back down. Do we have any questions there? Uh, I'll, make a, I'll make a comment. Did you see how you lost your balance on the kick there? Yeah. Uh, what's happening is when you get into that fifth position, uh, as you're ready to kick, you got to make sure that you're putting your weight on that right leg. Let's say I'm doing the leg mm -hmm. in front. Put the push down on the standing leg as you brush up, and then don't let anything here move. And then bring it back down, and then you're ready to move into the next step and close. Uh, what you did is, is very common uh, for kids who've never done body work whatsoever, is you gotta build your base. So this is my base, my standing leg. When I hit, I make sure this is here, and when I'm teaching it, I would do the same thing. Make sure you, all your weight's here, no weight on this leg, brush, brush. If you notice, nothing's moving here. It's just this one leg, and I'm pressing down. And that'll prevent you from running. The other thing, if you look at the fourth picture, where she actually kicks out, um, the other thing you're gonna see uh, kids they are doing it for the first time, you notice her toe is pointed really strong on the lift. Um, that also helps push the weight down to keep you from rocking. And the tendency, again, is when you brush out, is they're just gonna flex it through, and there's not gonna be any energy. So we always tell the kids, make sure you got energy going through that leg, and that helps you keep your balance as well. Okay, so our next movement, it's called a three-step turn. Um, you can do this with your horns up or your horns down. For now, we'll just keep your hands off to the side. And we're going to watch the video again first. And we'll do this on both sides. And it's a really quick turn. When, you, when we really focus on turns, you want to engage the core. Everything is going to stay straight. You don't want like your feet going past um, your shoulders. Everything's going to stay in time. So we'll go to the right side first. And again, bringing this down. I'm going to first turn down. From here, I'm just gonna keep my hands in like a plank position or horns down. So you step onto your second. From here, you're gonna pivot over your right leg and everything's gonna go together, your hips and your shoulders, to turn to the back and you wanna stay in releve, coming around into second. The whole time, stay up onto your toes. And again, everything went together. 
you pivot off of that left leg back out into a second to face the front, and then you would step into your flows here. So it was a really tight, quick turn. You want to make sure that when they do this, that they don't try to come around and everything spirals. Everything needs to stay together. And you want to squeeze and activate your core with this, your abs down. So again, going a little slower to the right side. So five, six, seven, eight, and step, turn, and close. You want to make sure. Turn. Yeah, so the first, the first one opens up. Your second step turns straight to the back. Your, your next step turns straight to the front. And this last step is actually just the close. So they're already facing the front, and it's just to, to close up and to balance out when we do the turn. Going to the left side, same concept, you're in first. You step into second with your left foot. You pivot onto the left foot to face the back in releve. Pivot again on the right foot to face the front. And then the last step is just the close. So you're already facing the front and count early to find um, your spotter. And so the spotter, like you want to find something to look at that's not moving. That's very key. They don't want to be moving. So if I'm, I can't do this way. So if I'm looking this way, I'm looking at that white box the whole time. So I step quickly and then come around. That last one is just to help find me. The balance point. If you pick something moving, you'll go with that moving object offward. So let's try the left side a little faster. So we're going to go five, six, seven, eight, step open to the back, to the front, and close. You want to make sure that they keep their head in line too. We don't want it to look fast. Everything, shoulders, hips, head goes together around to help find your balance in your turn. Do we have any questions on three-step turn? One of, one of the things I want to point out on the three-step turn, if you notice you're pivoting from one foot to the next foot, and the reason for that is that we want to make a consistent motion. So let's say we're in a block formation and we're going to do a three-step turn. If one kid goes step, pivot, pivot, and this is part of the go, but everybody else does the right way, they're going to end up, blocks end up here and he's going to end up in the center. So, you want to make sure it's a consistent thing, again, going to, into that second position, ensuring that your heels are in line with your shoulders so everybody's got the same width of opening within a millimeter or so. And then consistent turns all the way through. She, she talked about spotting. When you have a trumpet or a trombone, especially a long slide, if, if we're not spotting correctly, like she wanted to spot the front, you know, when I start that first step, if I did this, now all of a sudden my horn's on the back when everybody else is on the heel. So again, spotting is going to be really important when you start teaching those terms to ensure that the instruments are in the correct location. The other thing I wanted to mention with the three-step turn is you want to make sure that they don't helicopter. And what I mean by helicoptering, it's in the legs. So what it is, is when you step towards the back, their leg doesn't circle around <laughs> all the way to the front. This is a helicopter, and it makes it really hard for that one. So when you pivot, you want to think about pulling your leg in and out to face the back. It's a tight, it helps tighten everything up and step out instead of just like circling around with the legs, which is funny to watch, but it is not right. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, so let us take on our next fundamental. So our next one is chasse, which means to chase. And this is a newer one coming in to visuals. So in the chasse, which means to chase, and it's like your legs are chasing each other, you do get a little off the ground. So we'll break this one down, doing it slowly, and then being able to come off the ground. So in our next slide, it breaks it down as we go over it. So we're in first, and you're going to step out into second plie. So you go to your second and go straight into your plie. You don't want to come down here. It goes straight into your second plie here. Your legs are going to close. You're going to bring your left leg in. Straight up into a releve, into your first releve, coming towards that right leg, stepping out with the right leg into second plie, and then into your close. So this one, it brings like the beginning fundamentals coming into it. So coming back a little bit, doing it a little faster. So each one is a step, so you're going to go one, two, three, four counts. 
So we go five, six, seven, eight, and down, up, down, up. So all it is is that motion you're going down, up, down, up. So when you actually do it, you'll come slightly off the ground at the high point on this one is when you come off the ground into a point. You wanna make sure that your upper body's lifted, they don't come forward. So from when you do it, you go down, up, and then close. When you do it, you don't have to, like, you don't have to get like this high off the ground. You're getting just slightly off the ground where your toes are brushing and you come back out. So let's try that one slowly. Going this way, as slowly as we can with this. So five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four. So on that second step is that high point. You wanna make sure that your legs are straight as they can be in a point off the ground. Making sure that they don't come like this off the ground. You wanna think straight up and down. Going the other way, we go to the left, step out to second plie. Again, that right leg comes up to the left, straighten your legs out and roll away. Step back out to second, and then into your pose here. So going slowly, just the breakdown without the jump. We're gonna go five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four. And again, this is a moving one, so it's gonna take you off. Now let's try it going this way. And five, with the jump. Five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four. This one, you really wanna make sure they're squeezing so they don't tilt forward when they do the shot. Say everything is lifted. Do you have any questions here? Making sure they're pointing into the ground on the second count which is the jump in the air. You don't want them flexing going up. When they do the jump, the most important step of all, it's gonna be that third step when you go into the plie. Uh, sometimes when kids jump, they have a tendency to want to jump and then land straight leg. This is when you create injury to the kneecaps. You definitely wanna make sure at that point um, that they are going from a jump to a land. So whenever you jump up in the air, you wanna to remember to bend your knees in the landing. Landing straight leg is where the injuries start to happen. So our next movement is our forced arch. Now from here, it's gonna be a stationary movement. It's where your heel is lifted, as you can tell here. There's gonna be a line that's coming into like almost like a 90 degree. Your knee is bent, and it forces that arch in that foot. So we're gonna actually start in second here. From here, we're gonna go into your plie. From your plie, you're gonna think about turning in your right knee to your left. And the lower the knee is, the more arch you'll have in your visual here, making sure that your hips are going to the 45, but your upper body is straight to the front, unless you do something where it comes off to the side or comes back into forward. Going back into your second, going into your plie. Again, with the left side, left knee comes in. The lower your knee, the more the arch you're gonna get. Coming here, and then standing up. Do you have any questions on the force arch? You really, you can really tell the force arch when you're in your second plie. If you're standing, this is visible is your force arch. This is a force arch standing up. More visible is down in plie for that force arch because you can do it both those two ways. All right, so that is the end. Oh wait, a second. On the force arch, one of the things that you're going to notice for kids when they're first learning this is that they try to do the turn out using the knee to turn as opposed to turning from the hip. You want to get to make sure that the whole hip turns in so this doesn't shift over. It stays straight and up, okay? All right, so that ends our interactive portion. We can all take our seat again. You got a little work down in. <laughs> yeah, I know. All right, so we're gonna look at things to think about when you're placing your visuals. So you can do it in two ways. You can pick where you want to see the visual, and you can let your jewel writer know. Or, if you allow the jewel writer to place them on their own. So, we're going to look at if you are picking them. First of all, you want to remember, don't start in the middle of a phrase, and you want to be able to finish off your phrase for the visual to be happening. If you let the jewel writer place them, there's going to be a lot of folds in your show. You don't have to pick all of them. And then also, if there's a very long hold, but you know you want to see something on maybe during that hold, there's a little impact that lasts eight counts, and you want to do that to eight counts, that's fine too. And then there's like eight more counts of just playing 
it's your choice there. But you want to make sure that you pick a variety of musical phrases within your show. And that will also, when you're creating visuals, make sure it hits the musical impact. You don't want to just add visuals for the sake of visuals and it makes no sense. You want to make sure that you can visibly see the musicality in your visuals, like it's hitting every single thing that you're doing. Now we're going to look at our examples. We have five examples. We're going to do example one. We're going to do the horn line visual, a visual during the horn's playing, and we're going to use our ronde jambe, our tendu, and our passe here.
So in summary, we want to remember our stationary movements where the tendu is a straight um, stretcher to lengthen, the plie, which is to bend, the releve, which means to rise, the coupe is to cut, and again, you can be in parallel and turn out with all of these, our passe to pass through here, our lunges are the weight shifts, you can go on the sides, whichever side, the rond which is the semicircles. You can think, that if you're teaching it, you can think of the sand going to the beach. Or the four starches going, remember, either you can face forward, how the examples we did in the upper body example five. And our moving movements are the grapevine, take pictures, the weaving step, the balance, which is the rocking step, the chasse, which means to chase, coming slightly off the ground, remember, you don't have to like really jump up into the air, and the three step turn. Now, today we only covered the lower body with a few upper body things, but you can remember you can add your upper body movement as well as your horn carriage to add another dimension into your visuals. The, you can add these 12, we just worked on 12. You can add them different ways. As you saw the example, we went from a balance into a lunge. You can create any type of visual you want that fits your music. Just remember to really hit it musically. So, Anybody okay. who's looking for the slides, Megan has a card up front there. Uh, we can get just, them to you. Yeah, if you just want to send an email, she'll send you a PDF of all these slides, so you'll have the pictures and everything to, to look at and reference. Okay. Thank you. So if you have any questions, or if you're looking for a visual exercise program, we do have one available at our booth. We're right across from the escalators. We're the only one in the red tablecloth, so we're not hard to miss. Um, but does anybody have any questions? No? Think we covered everything? If you have any questions, I know you came in late. But please meet us upstairs. We also have chocolates. I don't want to take those home. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you for coming today. Thank you. Thank you.